This is the Rivian R1T, and it's a little bit like a Tesla Cybertruck, only you can actually buy it. Do you know what, that felt a little bit like being born again, and I don't mean in the religious way. Anyway, in this video, I'm gonna tell you all about this truck. I'm gonna talk you around the exterior. I'm gonna show you the interior. I'm gonna try out some of its technology. I'm gonna take it for a drive off-road. Then, of course, I'm gonna launch it to see how quick it is from naught to 60 miles an hour and over the standing quarter mile. Anyway, I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. That way, you won't miss a single upload. Buying a new car? Then head to Car Wow, and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. Car Wow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. Let's start this video by talking about the design of the Rivian R1T. So the outline is very much like a normal pickup, but it's got some modern elements like this huge light bar across the back. Being an electric vehicle, obviously it doesn't have exhaust pipes, though these design bits here do look a bit exhausty. I don't know why they've done that, but there we go. So moving down the side, wheel sizes actually start at 21 inches. These are the optional 20 inches because they're the off-road wheels and that's why we've got the off-road knobbly tires there moving down the sides very pick up -y. they look mm, flush door handles and i'll just open them with this rather cool key look it's a carabiner you can put it on your belt buckle like that you see anyhow let me just open the door look flush door handles lovely down the side we've got the Rivian logo there just a normal pickup from the side really isn't it apart from the rather cool brakes look at that very sporty looking yellow brake calipers which go with this cool yellow paint here at the front though, it's looking really modern again, isn't it? Look at that, that huge light bar. I love the design of the front of this car and the way they have the main headlight elements here. It's so good luck in the front. This one has the upgraded off-road pack. Then you get like some extra tough ruggedness and look these toe hooks there as well. This is the Rivian logo there, and you actually see it used in lots of different places throughout the truck. For instance, there on the lights and on the pillar between the front and rear doors. The thing I want to show you is this, look. When you lock the truck, hear that? So funny, it tweets like a bird. Now the starting price of this car, sorry car, truck, is $67,500, which works out to about 51,000 British pounds. This is a launch edition, so it has some extra bits and pieces on it as standard, and it starts from $73,000. Now, if you're thinking about buying a new pickup truck, or anything for that matter. You obviously need to sell your old car first. And if you want to do that, make sure you get a fair price for it. Click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link in the description below because you can sell your car through CarWow. You just upload some photos, give a brief description, and our trusted dealers will bid on your car. Then you can choose which dealer you sell it to and they'll come to your house, take it away, and put the money straight into your account. Now, if you want to do that at a later date, you just simply Google, help me car wow. Wait, I just want to do it again because I like it. There we go. I've got to say, I love the interior design of this Rivian. It doesn't feel like a truck at all. It feels like an expensive car. Now, it may look like leather, this, this, and it feels like it, but it's not. It's vegan friendly, as is the steering wheel, though it doesn't feel like leather so much, which is a bit of a shame. Roof lining is made out of recycled materials, but it doesn't feel in any way recycled. And then this open pour wood that you can get. It reminds me of another EV. Now, to find out what that EV is and to see an amazing deal you can actually get on it, click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link in the description below. Big shout out to the seats as well. These seats look cool. They're really comfy. They feel expensive. And obviously you've got full electrical adjustment and it is easy to get an ideal driving position in this car though to set the steering wheel you do have to go into the screen and then adjust the steering wheel using these buttons here like that so come on there we go yeah just like in a tesla so they try to reduce the amount of clutter and buttons so a lot of things are just controlled through here and then the buttons on the steering wheel once you set the car up it's not such a problem but it is a bit of a faff when you first get into the car speaking of the infotainment system really nice big digital display you go through the different menus like that and with the climate control you actually control the air vents by sliding the angles around like that on the screen touch sensitive buttons rather than physical buttons so they're a bit harder to press when you're driving but it's not too much of a faff you've got good mapping there like that and obviously you can plug in your destination it'll work out your charging points as well so you always get to your destination with some charge and you can just switch through different menus like that. I like it. One of the good things about this compared to say a Tesla Model 3 is that you also have a digital driver's display so you do see your speed in front of you. You can't really change what you see on there but it doesn't matter there's enough information for all that you really need. Another thing that I like about this car is the storage. So underneath here look you have a big storage bin and then here you have a wireless charging pad for your mobile phone so even if you've got a big silly semi tablet phone like me there's plenty of space for it and you can even Put that in there if you want to 
Here you have some big cup holders. There is no glove box though, but you'd have a big storage area there where you can put a bag and the door bins look, We've got a big bottle in the door bins there. I like the way that they're like folder style, like on the back of an airplane seat. They feel expensive, as do the door handles, which are, well, seem like they're solid metal. Don't know if they are. You've also got aluminium pedals, the floor mats, even though they're rubberized, they're like hard wearing, they feel expensive as well. No, it's, look, there, there's your Rivian logo. I told you there's loads of Rivian logos. In fact, look here on the charge pad, there's little Rivian logos as well. It's all very nice, all very well thought out. I mean, even this, look, you've got a nice big mirror there with two diffuse lights so you can look at yourself. Feel very smug about the fact you're driving a pickup truck, which is environmentally friendly. And no animals were killed in the production of the interior either. Here in the back seats, the quality theme continues and there's plenty of knee room. Headroom is good as well. People over six foot will be fine back here. We've also got this lovely big glass roof, which lets light in. And because you've got a flat floor, because obviously all the batteries are underneath the floor, there's plenty of foot space. So if you need to carry three at once, there's room for everybody's feet. Now, what sometimes happens in electric cars is because of those batteries underneath the seats, the seats seem quite low, but not in this. So it's nice and comfortable. Also, look there, you've got your yeah, fix anchor points for fitting baby seats. You've also got some posh, look at this with the buckles, the, the folds on the back of the seats. You've got a coat hook there. You've got USB-Cs there. You've got your climate control there with more USB sees there and you probably can't see it but there is a normal three pin socket there as well now check this out right look underneath here we have some extra storage and a subwoofer for the stereo system and oh, that's a bit annoying having to pull down the armrest like that and the fact that you've got exposed cup holders so you do put your wrists in them but you have some extra storage there and look at this through this flap is access to the place from which I was born at the beginning of the video. So one of the really unique features on this truck is what they call the gear tunnel. I mean, look at that. I'll just run around and show you. <laughs> it is really large. See, hello, you're on me. It's huge, isn't it? And the tunnel. Being a pickup, you've got an absolutely massive low bed. So the total capacity is 1,925 liters. And look, underneath here, you have some more literage. We do have a full size spare, but this actual well is about 200 liters and you can fill it full of ice to put like drinks in there. And there's a drain plug in there. So when it all melts, you can just let it all out. Obviously it's a long bed as well. Look at this and it can take quite some weight. So the payload, what you can carry in there, 800 kilos. It's not the biggest compared to internal combustion engine trucks, but it's still pretty blooming good. So is a towing capacity. This thing can tow 5,000 kilos. Now I want to show you something else. Just in here, there's a little insert there where you can put a special cable so you can like attach it to whatever you're carrying in the back such as a bike a motorbike a quad or something and it's linked to the car's security system so it has something similar to tesla like the sentry system which has cameras which records if someone like gets near to the vehicle or tries to fiddle with it and with the gear guard wrapped through your motorbike or whatever if someone tries to pull on it it senses the the pressure and it'll actually alert you on your mobile phone so you can see what's going on all very clever. Need more storage? Well, not a problem, look at this. Underneath the bonnet, you have a front boot. I mean, 330 litres of space, look. Keep all your cables and stuff under there. And look, here's the, the special gear guard cable that I was talking about. That you plug in at the back to secure whatever vehicle or bike you're carrying. Shame you can't fit a bike in here, really. Maybe a small bike. Now to shut it, you press this, because it's all electrically operated. Come on. That's kind of cool, though I do miss the enjoyment of just slamming a bonnet. And that brings on to five annoying things about this truck. For a high-tech vehicle, there is no Android Auto for the infotainment system, which is a bit annoying. Now, before all you Apple fanboys go, no, 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 should have bought nothing. There's no Apple CarPlay either, so. Many American pickups allow you to open this back window, which is pretty nice, but on this one, no, let me in, let me in, Daniel. <laughs> Isn't it really cool the way this has speakers built into the headrest? They look really nice down there as well. Sounds impressive. Actually, they're not speakers, they're just a design feature. But anyone you take in this car is going to go, oh, wow, cool, look at those speakers in the headrest. And then you're going to have to explain to them that no. See the way this cladding extends like that? Well, because the door is quite narrow at the bottom, the way you get out like that, you end up like dragging the back of your leg across this piece of plastic. And if you're wearing shorts, you could end up with a bit of chafing on your calves. There's no grab handles here on the windscreen pillar to help you hoik yourself into the car. And because there's no running boards to step on either, you end up having to just like, sort of like mountaineer into the vehicle. Oh, you see. It's not all negative though. 
Here's five good things about this car. Want to change the location of your roof bars? Well, they are easily removable, adjustable, and you can even mount them. This is going to be really ungainly. On here, look, slidey, slidey, locky, locky. Not sure about this pose, though. There's a flashlight in the driver's door. Look at that. Oh, I quite like the way it extends. It feels really expensive as well. It's metal and it's always going to be charged because it charges off the car's battery. And because the car's got all the kilowatt hours, this will never be without power. Want to go off road? Well, you're going to have to ensure that your tyres are at the right settings, aren't you? So in here, you have a special high pressure hose and you simply plug this into how do these watches they interrupt you when you're doing pieces to camera you plug that into there and then you can set the pressure that you want plug that into your tires and you can just set it for whether you're off-roading or on-roading ow it's all going wrong and everything's beeping now here's a feature i absolutely love look at this underneath here is a removable bluetooth speaker which rivian calls the camp speaker because you can beam music from the car stereo from your phone and play it outside the car while you're camping you can get a bunch of accessories for this Rivian, including a tent. You don't have to have the slightly aggressive German Shepherd. My particular favorite is this, it's called the Camp Kitchen. If I press this button, I can go into the gear tunnel and my friend Joey here will show you exactly what you can have in here. Go on. So you pull this out and you've effectively got a very posh camping kitchen which runs off the car's battery system. In here, we have an induction hob. Here is the sink area, and you've got a four gallon tank here. So look, there's a sink, and th there's your tap. Now in here, have got the drawers with the pans. We've also got the bowls and cups, and then utensils. It's all very cool. You all right, boy? You all right? <laughs> <laughs> This Rivian has four electric motors, one controlling each wheel. Combined, they put out 800 horsepower and 900 newton meters of torque. You have a 135 kilowatt hour battery pack, which will give you a range of 314 miles. There will be a bigger battery coming out later on, which will give you a range of around 400 miles. Now to charge it, you just press this button like that and that opens up really cool. Now if you charge it on a fast DC charger, you can charge at a rate of around 200 kilowatts. That means you can charge from zero to about 140 miles in just 20 minutes now obviously with such a big battery pack on board this thing is quite heavy it weighs over 3100 kilos how does that affect the braking let's find out i'm going to see how quick it can stop from 100 miles an hour and from 60 miles an hour let's do it yeah you can get up to 60 miles an hour pretty quickly more than that in a bit because i'm going to be launching it let's get to 100 miles an hour here we go full emergency stop now <laughs> I've got full region on, full braking. How long did it take to stop? So this car stopped from 100 miles an hour in 117 meters, which is quite a lot, and from 60 in 43 meters. And before you say, oh wait, but you're going quicker than 100 miles an hour. This device only registers once I click over 100 and likewise with 60. So the distance from 60 miles an hour, 43, I got on the road in a Range Rover hybrid, 35 meters. However, obviously the Range Rover, I've never said this before, it's quite a bit lighter than this and was on street tires i think the braking performance has been affected once again by the off-road tires i've got to try it on street tires haven't i really but it's, it's not terrible considering the weight and now i'm going to drive it over a selection of bumps and ruts to check out the chassis articulation so we've got fully independent suspension obviously air suspension hence it was able to increase its ride height and we'll see what it's like at driving over these bits i mean this is easy mm -hmm. That's just a bit of a bush against the side of the car. I mean, that's not that extreme. This car could have done more than that. Probably looked about as spectacular as it felt. That was just uh, too easy. What I'm going to do now is move the suspension into softer. Oh yeah, notice that. I want to press that rally button. In fact, I want to press the drift button, which gives you a sporty throttle response and handling, but it also disengages the stability control so you can slide it about on the dirt, but I'm not really supposed to do that today. Okay, so we've got some ruts here. Once again, this is just going to walk this, no problem at all. And constant traction. Because you've got a motor controlling each wheel, there's no messing around with differentials. You don't have to fanny about with stability control, trying to like make up for the fact that you're losing traction from one wheel and prevent a wheel spinning away. The motor will control each wheel as it needs to. 
When you think about it, like electric power is just so good for off-roading, especially as well. There's no gearbox and you can control everything using your right foot. I have not touched the brakes at all. You just got total control over the vehicle. It really does make a lot of sense. The only downside, I guess, is the weight because the lighter your vehicle is, generally it does help you with off-roading. It feels very stiff, actually, the chassis, which is also a good thing. You don't want it like bending and flexing much. You do get a good view out. In fact, it's easy to judge where the front of the car is. Also, do you know what? To prevent me like scratching this paintwork, which I do like, by the way, aren't any more bushes. I'm just gonna go for the surround view camera there and I can see where my wheels are, that's handy. Now we're starting to go downhill a little bit here and this is where the one pedal drive really comes into its own. And as I'm going down the hill, I'm increasing in smugness because obviously I'm recharging the battery. Woo, this is like a roller coaster. <laughs> here we go. And yeah, it's taking me down slowly. That was really steady down there. There is no hill descent control, but there you don't need it. It's just the regen doing it. Oh, this is checking out the traction going up here and I can control it just perfectly on the accelerator pedal. Funny thing is though, I know that if I floor it, I could literally get air over here because the acceleration on this thing is nuts. And we'll find out more about that a bit later in this video when I launch it because yes, I launch absolutely everything. One thing I've noticed is that I haven't felt the wheel slip at all. I have got knobbly tires on this, but that's another thing about electric vehicles. They're so good at just managing the power so that they're always maintaining traction. So this obstacle here will just test the approach angle, the departure angle and the breakover angle. And if you like numbers, the approach angle on this car is 34 degrees, departure angle is 29 degrees and the breakover 26 degrees. And I'm going to test the approach now. Oh yeah, it's fine. <laughs> you can go up steeper than that. And the breakover, obviously with pickups, they can be a little bit long. So they are affected a little bit in terms of the breakover, but a 26 breakover is actually fairly decent. Right. That's pretty much the off-road course dealt with. It wasn't exactly hardcore. I'd like to try this in something a little bit tougher, but sections were a little bit rutted and it just dealt with a piece of cake. Finally then, I'm gonna launch the Rivian. So it's supposed to do 0 to 60 in three seconds flat, but will it? I'm gonna find out. I've got my specialist timing gear up here and seeing as I'm on a runway, I'm gonna keep on going for the quarter mile. Anyway, all I'm gonna do is just draw the throttle, see what happens. Three, two, one, go. Oh, you can hear the tyres scrabbling away. Not 16, 3.87. I am on off-road tyres, so street tyres would be quicker. Let's keep going for the quarter mile. What we got? 12.51. Okay, so I think in the interest of fairness and science, I need to do a run in the opposite direction. And that has nothing to do with the fact that that was a lot of fun and I just want to do it again. Right, promise. This time I'm going to launch, but I'm not just going to floor the accelerator. I'm going to hold it on the brake, floor the accelerator, and then release the brake. Because then you have a sort of launch control, even though it doesn't actually say launch control anywhere on the dash but let's see what happens this time so floor the accelerator I'm gonna release the brake now <laughs> not the same here we go 3.66 so it was slightly quicker let's keep on going quarter mile 12.14 you know that's similar speed to an Audi RS5 you know and this is a lot heavier than an Audi RS5 like normal road speeds when you Put your foot down it just takes off what you do notice is that at higher speeds the power starts to tail off but you're not really going to be experiencing that on the road unless you're in germany and on the autobahn it's a quick truck now one of the reasons i might be a little bit off that 0 to 60 time that rivian claim is that they use foot rollout when they're measuring the 0 to 60 time whereas i don't i just do it straight from a standstill because that just seems the proper way to do it really. I know Tesla did the same thing with the foot rollout. Better numbers, I guess. You know, the Americans, they're good at marketing, aren't they? So then what's my final verdict on the Rivian R1T? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I think you should just go right ahead and buy the Rivian. I think it is a really luxurious, super cool, very fast electric truck. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. Let me know some other videos you'd like to see in the comments below. Click on those windows for some more videos. And on that box there, to go to CarWow for help selling your car.